close your eyes, focus on your breath. No one is coming in, no one is going out. Try to keep your mind firmly planted right here and standing straight and tall. Because when the mind leans over, that's when you cause trouble. Sometimes you lean over into things that you want, then you lean over in another direction because of things that you really hate. Sometimes you lean over because of delusion, and other times you lean over because of fear. In other words, you do things that you know are not right, but you're afraid that somebody is going to punish you for doing the right thing. And so fear overcomes your knowledge of what's right and wrong. The same thing that your desires and your aversions and your delusion can also overcome your, your knowledge of what's right and wrong. So you end up doing the things you know are not right. But for one reason or another, you just let yourself go ahead with these leanings of the mind. Of course, when the mind leans, and the whole, it looks like the whole rest of the world is leaning too. You're leaning over to the right. Why is everybody leaning to the left? Or if you're leaning to the left, why is everybody leaning to the right? You've got to ask yourself, well, maybe, maybe somebody's standing up straight and tall and we don't realize it. So bring the mind to the breath. This is a good place to settle in so you get a good sense of what's right and wrong, what's proper and what's improper. And also you begin to realize that there is the question of short-term welfare and happiness and long-term welfare and happiness, like we had in that chant just now, and giving gifts for long-term welfare and happiness, being generous, sticking to the precepts, meditating. These are things that do lead to long-term welfare and happiness. And in the leaning, though, we just go for the short term. We want some quick happiness, and it doesn't really matter how it comes as long as we get our sense of pleasure. But then we end up having long-term pain. And this is why the, the Buddha calls these things akati, things where the mind shouldn't go. It shouldn't go in line with its desires or in line with its aversion or delusion or its fears, because these can lead to long-term pain. Even though it looks like in the short term you may t gain an advantage. Sometimes with the precepts it looks like there's an advantage in killing or stealing or having illicit sex or in lying. The big one is lying. Of all the precepts, that's the one the Buddha focused on the most. Because if you feel no compunction, you feel no shame at telling a deliberate lie, then you can do all kinds of other evil things as well. Yet sometimes the mind can see that it might be in its own best interest to to tell a little bit of lie. And you say, well, it's just a white lie. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't, or it doesn't really, the person I'm lying to doesn't really matter. The mind can find all kinds of excuses. And this is the mind leaning over in terms of its desire or in terms of its fear or whatever. And you've got to remind yourself at those points, okay, there's nothing to be gained by breaking a precept. There may be a short-term gain, but there's a long-term loss. The same with the fifth precept against taking alcohol or other intoxicants. It may seem like a little bit of fun right now, but many times the things you do under the influence of those things are going to cause long-term pain. So you've got to ask yourself, what do you want, just the short-term pleasure or you want something that's long-term and lasting? The kind of pleasure that is good for you while you have it, and when you look back on it, you, there's a sense of well-being, a sense of ease. It's not like the sensory pleasures of the world, the good things you tasted or saw or smelled or whatever, listened to in the past, where is the pleasure from those things right now? It's all gone. And sometimes you stop and think about what you had to do in order to gain those pleasures, and you're embarrassed. And so that pleasure then gets tinged with pain. So you've got to think about the long term, because that's a sign that you really love yourself, that you're not just going to go for the quick fix. You're going to go for the long term, the happiness that really lasts, the happiness that really does provide well-being for the mind. And so to see this properly, you have to learn how to get your mind to set up straight. That's why we have it staying here in the present moment, just watching the breath come in, watching the breath go out. Because as you get more and more sensitive to the breath energy in the body, then when the mind starts leaning in different directions, you'll notice it. It's like having a gyroscope. As soon as you lean over, the gyroscope lets you know, hey, you're leaning. So when the mind is centered like this, it's got this gyroscope inside to keep all your decisions upright, standing tall. And of course, it's when you're standing tall that you can see farther, you can see further into the distance to what the long-term happiness is going to be. So try to develop this uprightness of the mind, because it's going to see you through a lot of confusion. Make sure that you don't have to get involved in a lot of turmoil. Just like the gyroscope on a ship, even though there's a storm, the ship stays upright because of the gyroscope, even though there are storms all around us in the world. Other people's desire and aversion and delusion and fears. But we don't have to give in to ours, we don't have to be influenced by theirs, because we've got our own inner gyroscope.